This is an election to save democracy. You may ask me, why are you afraid? Please understand. Under the Modi government, democracy has been eroded to some extent, some such extent, that most observers, most intellectuals think we are an electoral autocracy. There is this facade of a democracy, but inside the democracy is completely hollow. No institution functions truly in India with absolute independence and autonomy. Everybody is controlled by the government of India, the Election Commission, the Information Commission, the Human Rights Commission, the Scheduled Caste Commission, the Scheduled Tribes Commission. Every, this, even the CAG, even the CAG is controlled by the government. There is gross interference in the judiciary, especially lower judiciary. There is interference in specific cases. Today, in the last 10 years of Modi government, 32 journalists have been killed. Dozens of journalists have been arrested and tried. You all know the case of Siddiqui, who went from Kerala to cover the murder of a girl. And he's been in jail. He was in jail for at least two and two, two half years. I'm not aware whether he's still in jail or he's been finally granted bail. Media is completely controlled by the corporates. The major English news channels are com controlled by corporates. All the newspapers are virtually controlled by corporates except some courageous language newspapers. There is gross censorship. Every day the government says, pull this tweet down from uh, X page, uh, pull this out of the Facebook, pull this out of the WhatsApp. What is the business of government to interfere with free expression? Today, even a cartoonist, even a cartoonist cannot draw a car cartoon. Remember what Jawaharlal Nehru told the famous cartoons, Shankar, don't spare me Shankar. I enjoy your cartoons and I know what my faults are. Today you can't even have a cartoon on Mr. Narendra Modi or his ministers. There is a grave erosion of freedom, freedom of speech, expression, freedom to travel. We have to restore democracy. I'm afraid, and I've said this in Tamil Nadu, if Mr. Modi's voted back to power for the third time, he will amend the constitution. He may say whatever he wants to say, he will amend the constitution. He amended the constitution and divided Jammu and Kashmir. Nobody could have even thought that the status of a state which joined the federation can be reduced to union territory. Where is the law which says that? Today, this is a happen to Jammu and Kashmir. It can happen to any state. It can happen to UP. It can happen to Tamil Nadu. It can happen to Bengal. It can happen to any state. And he will rule through a lieutenant governor or a governor. Now, this has to be safeguard. We have to ensure that democratic freedoms are not eroded. Today, parliament is a shadow of the old parliament. Not one adjournment motion was, has been admitted in the parliament in the last several sessions. Not one adjournment motion. An adjournment motion is intended to discuss a matter of extreme urgency. Are you saying that there is no matter of urgency in India which requires to be discussed in parliament? Not one adjournment motion has been allowed. Therefore, we have to revitalize these democratic institutions, which we will do if the India bloc is voted to power. I'm afraid if Mr. Modi is voted to power, this will be the true last democratic election. There will be elections like we have in China and Russia and uh, Iran and uh, uh, Hungary. You can have elections or you will have in Venezuela on July 28. 
you, if you want to have free, fair elections and democracy, thriving democracy, based on the Westminster principles of parliamentary democracy, we must stop Mr. Modi from coming to power and the India bloc must regain power.